All right, well, we're back now to uh, talk yeah, about uh, this big story that broke this week, uh, and that was that uh, yeah. University of Missouri defensive end Michael Sam announced that he is gay. He will go through the next NFL draft. Uh, he'll become the first openly gay player in the NFL. Yesterday, the All-American received a standing ovation at a Missouri basketball game where he and the rest of the football team were honored for their Cotton Bowl victory. Well, we're joined now by Howard Bragman, who represents uh, Michael Sam. He is in Los Angeles. Uh, Sid Ziegler of Outsports.com is in New York. I believe he broke this story. NFL wide receiver Dante Stallworth is a free agent, most recently played with the New England Patriots, and he works with Principal Six and Athlete Alley, organizations focused on ending homophobia in sports. He is in Miami here in the studio. Jarrett Bell, the NFL columnist for USA Today. Uh, Sid Ziegler, uh, you broke this story. Uh, why is this a big story? Well, it's a big story because it's history. You know, we've never had an openly gay player try to enter the NFL or play in the NFL. And there's been so much talk about how this would be impossible. Last year, I had media members betting me that what we are seeing unfold right now was literally impossible that the front offices and locker rooms in the NFL weren't ready for it. And we are seeing this unfold before our eyes. The NFL is ready for it. The fans are ready for it. America's ready for it. And, you know, the kids who are struggling right now with their sexual orientation, they're really ready to see this. You know, I, I agree with what you've said, uh, but I also read Sports Illustrated this week. And while they say this is something that goes far beyond sports, uh, their story indicated there are still people in the NFL that are not quite ready for it. They talked about uh, uh, players. They didn't quote anybody by name. They talked about uh, some coaches uh, who talked about how this, that some teams will be, uh, uh, will be uh, reluctant to draft him. Uh, Howard, you worked with Michael Sam on making this announcement and all that. Is he ready for what's ahead? He really is. You know, we broke the story last a week ago. We broke it last Sunday evening. Michael did two interviews, um, ESPN and the New York Times. Michael got on a plane the next morning, went back to his training facility, and a lot of people have used the word distraction, Bob. Michael's the least distracted in this. He understands his only job right now is to get ready to play the best football of his life. And he's going to the Combine in Indianapolis this week to show his stuff for the NFL scouts. He is so ready for this. And if you saw Michael's backstory, he had a very hard scrabble upbringing. He was one of eight kids, uh, two siblings. One was murdered, one disappeared, one drowned, two in jail. This is a courageous young man with a lot of character who's gone up through a lot in his life. And this is just one dimension of what defines him as an ambitious and talented young man. Uh, Dante, you, uh, you say you were once uh, homophobic. Uh, you've been in a lot of locker rooms in the NFL. Uh, what do you think the atmosphere is going to be? Do you think, number one, that uh, he will be drafted? Uh, will he be an early draft pick? Uh, Will teams be reluctant to uh, uh, try to get him? Um, I think the, uh, the initial consensus was that he would be a, a mid-round draft pick, anywhere from the third, uh, third round to the fifth round of the NFL draft. Um, you, you, hear, you hear the guys on the panel speaking about how focused he is. Uh, I think the biggest, the biggest thing is that he's, uh, he's changed the conversation about homophobia in all of sports. And th for this, it's no longer a question for the NFL. If, if the NFL is ready for a gay player, the NFL has to be ready. And, that, and the onus is on everyone to, to make sure that, that he is, uh, that he is uh, in, a, in a safe workplace. The NFL has uh, all of these policies in, in action now. And I think that it's important that we understand that Michael Sam will, he will be accepted into an NFL locker room, uh, regardless of what you've heard from, from other uh, anonymous general managers. I think that um, eventually, over time, um, everyone will accept him, but it, it will take some time, but I think he'll be fine at the end of the day. Jared, I've left it for you to be the cleanup man here because uh, you, you kind of stand back from this. You're a, you're a reporter. Everybody else on the panel has kind of have an interest in this. Uh, uh, you do as a reporter, but uh, you can give us a little overview. How do you think that, what, what do you think is going to happen? Well, obviously, I think he'll get his opportunity, and I think the NFL, as it has expressed with Roger Goodell on down, that it will 
welcome him with open arms. So we'll see how that plays out. But I think, Bob, that this entire story is forcing people, particularly those within the NFL, to confront whatever stereotypes they have. We're going to find out how tolerant the NFL really is. And another thing that's that's interesting is that we're, we're kind of in this age of enlightenment in the NFL. Where we've had so many different issues from a, a social standpoint that have come before us just within the past few months. We had uh, three incidents during the past football season where uh, the, the use of racial slurs was, you know, it, germane to the story. We've had the Jonathan Martin, Richie Incognito situation in Miami that has made headlines. The football team right here in the nation's capital with a, a racial slur is the nickname. Uh, much debate about that and that's going to continue. And so the NFL is in a, you know, an extremely unique position to really show some social leadership right now. And I think Roger Goodell and the league office has put the right messages out there, but we're going to find out exactly if the money is where the mouth is in this issue. Uh, Sid, uh, this is a story really that goes beyond sports, which is why we're doing it uh, on Face the Nation today, where we normally uh, concentrate on politics and things of that nature. How big a story do you think this is? I mean, for the culture, is this a sign that things are changing? Are we going to find out if they're changing or not? Where do you put this? Yeah, I think this is arguably the most important coming out in our culture's history. I look at when Ellen DeGeneres came out, that was hugely impactful and helped change the conversation. This is right there because of the, the power that the NFL and football has. Half of America calls football their favorite sport. And I think that going forward, what's amazing about this is Michael Sam himself. You know, we're so focused on talking about a gay football player, but we need to shift the conversation about Michael Sam. I have spent time with this guy. He is gregarious. He has a sense of humor. He's warm. He's engaging. He's going to be so successful in the locker room. And America is going to fall in love with his personality instead of just looking at him as a, a gay football player. So I think that going forward, it is super important. And, and part of the reason is because of who the man is. Why, Howard, did he decide to do this? I mean, when he come right down to it. I mean, he told his teammates at Missouri last year, they said, we already know. Uh, why did he find this was uh, important to do it now? Actually, Bob, we were going to do it uh, instead of Sunday, we were going to do it Monday. But it became very clear to us on Saturday that media outlets were prepared to break this. So he was about to be outed. And what was always important to Michael is he come out in his terms, in his words, on his timetable. So we moved it up. He wanted to tell his story and tell his truth. And it, that's what's so important here, that he own his story and the courage that goes with it, and that we found the kind of journalists that allow him to tell his own story in the best way possible. Uh, Dante, uh, we all know the wonderful story of Jackie Robinson and how uh, the reason Branch Rickey picked him uh, is because, not because he was the very best uh, African-American ball player at that time, it turned out he probably was, but because he knew he had the personality and the character uh, to, to go through what Branch Rickey knew he was going to go through. Uh, here, Michael uh, has decided he picked himself to do this. Uh, what advice would you have him for, for him when he walks into that locker room, wherever he winds up playing? Um, I think it's just be yourself. Uh, I've talked to plenty of people in the uh, University of Missouri, the football family over there. Uh, I've talked to former players. I've talked to a coach that was there uh, and that still is there. And the guys, everyone, everyone's had nothing but glowing remarks about the kid. They said he's a hard worker, he's a leader, and he jokes around with his teammates just like everyone else does. Um, so I think the, the biggest thing that we all should understand is that he's going to be fine. Um, there, there may be a guy or two in the locker room that, that won't agree with his lifestyle. And, um, and what his sexual preferences are, but I don't, I, I've talked to many guys in the NFL and I don't think anyone's gonna confront him, um, but he'll, I, my, my biggest advice for him is just to be yourself and he'll get a chance to do that going into the NFL draft and combine. Uh, I think it's this weekend and the following week, so he'll, he'll be okay, he'll be fine. Jared, I guess in the end, what'll, what'll settle this is if he's a good football player. Yo, oh, no question about that. And I think it's so important that Michael Sam end up with a team that can support 
him and to really be able to deal with the attention and the support that's going to be necessary for this to really be successful and for us to get beyond this. Uh, one thing to point out, Bob, there have been gay players that have played in the NFL for decades. We just didn't know. know them when they were, were outed. But uh, right. this will be an interesting uh, development to, to follow. Obviously. And we'll be back in a minute. Thank you.